Good evening and welcome to the June 24th meeting of the Edina Planning Commission. Jackie, if you could please take roll call. Here. 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 Here, I'd like to note we have perfect attendance tonight, right? Yes, for the summertime, that's great. So the uh, first item on the agenda tonight is approval of the meeting agenda. Are there any additions or subtractions to that before you? I just have one comment uh, in the uh, chair and commission comments or somewhere we'll talk about the work plan, the 2015 work plan, and Carrie has that here too. I don't know if it needs to go on the agenda, but I just thought I'd bring it up in advance. So hearing nothing, I would take a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next up is approval of the consent agenda. The only thing on there is the meeting, is the minutes of the Planning Commission meeting for the June 10th. Are there any modifications to those minutes? Seeing none, I'd take a motion to approve. Move to approve the minutes. Do I have second. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. So next up is community comment. This is where anyone from the community can step forward. You have three minutes to tell us your thoughts. I don't see a lot of people here tonight, but uh, give them that option. So if uh, seeing no one, I'd take a motion on that to close Motion it. to close, community comment. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Aye, motion carries. So next up is a staff briefing with uh, Cindy Larson. She is the residential redevelopment coordinator with the city of Edina. And uh, she's been in role about two years, roughly. And uh, her position was created as in response to all the redevelopment, in particular the teardowns. And, uh, and she's going to give us a little update where we're at. Uh, just as a little precursor, we, we had some updates and ordinances we've done in 2013. So I just thought I'd want her to come back and tell us what she's seeing, if anything needs to be updated, or any general questions that folks want to ask her about. So welcome and thanks. Thank you. Good evening, Chair and Commissioners. Tonight, I'll be providing you with a brief update on the current happenings associated with the residential redevelopment activities. First, a little background information. As of June 15th of this year, we have had 41 permits pulled or applied for for demolition permits. And in comparison, comparing that to a couple of years prior, you will notice that that is down a little bit from the numbers. Um, 2014, we had 49, and in 2013, we had 58 permits. There are currently 114 new residential construction permits that are open in various stages of construction throughout the city. And to give you a little I idea of where these are located, I hope this is not too hard to see, um, but the, the redevelopment sites are highlighted here in red. And as you can see, there's only a handful south of 62, and they're, hot, they're concentrated more in the northeast part of the city. The most common inquiries that I receive from calls and emails regard the following topics. Just general miscellaneous questions about an upcoming project. The city may or may not know about it if the permit has been applied for. So just um, general questions about something somebody saw or heard about in their neighborhood. Parking congestion, drainage questions, construction hour questions and complaints, property damage and encroachment claims, and tree removal concerns. Recent changes in the redevelopment policies include the creation of a demolition application checklist. And this is part of the application packet, and it helps to streamline the approval process and also provides details on our dust control, hazardous materials, and utility disconnect policies. Another change is last winter we implemented a new section on the City of Edina website titled Toolkits for Neighbors, which can be searched for 
on the website. And this section provides answers to frequently asked questions for residents near a redevelopment site, such as how to learn about the new house plans, questions to ask during the neighborhood meeting, and how to handle construction management issues. Upcoming changes, the most notable is the enforcement of the tree preservation ordinance. The building planning and public works departments have been working in, prepa in preparation of how the enforcement for this new ordinance is going to occur, which takes effect next Wednesday, July 1st. The permit approval process will include a review of the tree plan that will now be required and a site inspection by the city forester. Next steps. City staff is in the process of researching whether a site perimeter fencing requirement might be beneficial to help with itch issues such as site security and property line encroachment issues. The photos that you see here were taken during a field trip to some of the suburbs of Chicago that experience the same type of redevelopment as we do here in Edina. And these cities all require a six, a six foot chain link fence around the site. So it's something that we're looking into to see if it would be a positive for us here in Edina. Additionally, I'm going to be incorporating additional information into that toolkit, which is online. Items to include an explanation for different types of issues that are enforceable by city code descriptions for situations that property owners adjacent to a redevelopment site might encounter, and, and contact information for appropriate parties should citizens have a dispute with a Minnesota licensed contractor. So just generally getting more information online as, as a go-to point for people to start off with when they do have questions. And with that, I will stand for questions from you. Any questions? Ms. Larson. Commissioner Olson. Um, do you have, uh, do you keep track of like how much use you're seeing with that toolkit? I mean, can you keep track of how many hits you're getting or? I'm not sure if our communications department is able to do that or not. Yeah, just curious if it's getting, you know, a lot of use. Right. I think that's, that's great. Yep. The, um, sorry, do you have something? Else? The, did we add another forester? Or do we, do we add like a half of a forester or do we? At this time, the um, city forester is not a full-time position. Oh, so we don't there need is a um, part-time seasonal helper and that's all being looked at because this is gonna greatly reduce right. or Increase. accentuate the hours of, of that person's workload. Okay, and then just my final question, um, why the fence? What what was the benefit of that, do you know? Around? The thought is that it might help with encroachment and um, property line disputes. It would also keep workers on site and not walking onto neighbors' properties. Um, another benefit would be that it could keep out, uh, it could serve as a security mechanism for this site. There has been a fair amount of theft from construction sites recently, and that's something that it might become a benefit for, so. I was just wondering how exactly um, users to the website are going to find the toolkit. You said you can search for it, but is there any way that it could be more accessible to people trying to get the information that the toolkit provides? I did present the information at the uh, recognized neighborhoods meeting and asked that they share it. So it's kind of a word of mouth thing at this point. And it's definitely something that we're gonna try and promote more moving forward. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I was gonna mention that. I'm wondering if the city communications department, if they could get involved, because see things like next door come out, items like that, that could be linked to that too, because I would think it'd obviously help the neighbors as well as city staff in both, both places, right? Because it would also, hopefully, people could go there versus just calling to get an answer. They might find it there. As well as just all the information that's there, so I don't, I don't know what the publication plan for it is, but I would strongly recommend the city do uh, some additional on that because I didn't know it was there. I'm mean, not that I know 
but it was it was new. But it, it seems like there a lot of a lot of folks get a lot of uh, good information from that. And I was also say the other thing: Can you or Carrie? Can you send us at least me and probably everyone else a demo of a copy of the demo application checklist? That'd be great. Sorry, Commissioner Hobbs. Yeah, could you just review the the notification process for neighbors when there's a, a project proposed? Sure. Property owners within 300 feet of the site are to be notified 15 days before the demolition occurs, and they're also to be invited to a neighborhood meeting. That should be five days before the neighbor or before the demolition occurs. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Forrest. It almost seems a little bit backwards. It's kind of like let's talk to the um, the neighbors before you know earlier than the five days um, but anyway my questions had to do with have you do you have you quantified your calls and the types of issues and what's the total number of calls you've gotten in a calendar year I have not been tracking the calls as I did when I first started it was a lot of paper and so um, we aren't tracking it at that in that same mechanism so that would be nice if, if something comes before us to be able to document the the um, the issue with n actual numbers. You know, like yes, I got 68 calls in the last six months on this issue. So maybe this is something we should address with the with the zoning ordinance or whatever. Um, and then we were at a workshop or work session, and one of the city engineering staff was talking about erosion control issues, and that very a lot of builders weren't doing what he understood should be recommended regarding plantings and all that other stuff during the construction phase. So is, is, is all that on the checklist as well? Um, the erosion gets, the plan gets approved or reviewed and approved by the engineering okay. department. I have noticed that there has been improvement in that area. We also have had a lot less significant rainfalls this year, so that helps as well. But I'm finding that the the builders that do a lot of work here in the city have caught on and, and they're understanding what we're looking for and why. And so there has been improvement in that area. And if somebody doesn't comply with, say, uh, erosion control or, or some other thing like that, what's the um, remedy? What, what, can the, what does the city empower to do? And, and the first thing that we would do is, is ask for compliance. So we would give that person three days to remedy the issue. If that doesn't take place, we would issue a stop work order or we could hire somebody to do the work and take out of their escrow funds. So it's, it's three days for everything? What if somebody doesn't have a BIFS on site or something like that? The, it's three days generally speaking. There are some things that need to be addressed by the end of the day, such mm -hmm. as dirt in the street, um, those types of things. So it does depend on what the issue is. but. First, most of the items, it's three days. Okay, that's good. Thanks. Commissioner sure Nemiroff. Uh, thank you for the report. Uh, on the map, you know, you had various places that were more dense red than others. And I, and I, I suspect that some of those areas that are more densely red uh, have had previous red that is now turned white. Do you get a different kind of calls from the neighbors in those areas if they like they might have seen trucks there for a year or two that's correct the areas that are more um, busy generate a lot more calls and it does wear on residents so the parking type calls are going to be more frequent um, on the west side of town and south there's bigger lots so there's more room for people to move around and navigate and less people walking through um, people's yards and things like that. So the smaller the lot, the more calls, I would say is a very safe generalization. Can you use the uh, escrow fund for street damage? Yes. So how would you go about that? I mean, would somebody have to call in and We show do an that inspection or? before the demolition occurs and take photographs and then before the permit is closed out, engineering goes out and looks at the street conditions again. So if, there, if we've received a call in between there, we definitely have documented that. Or if we're noticing something during that last inspection, then engineering is very involved in that process because they're going to 
dictate whether it's, um, you know, it's a, a scratch and that's more aesthetic versus actual damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mission Forest? Um, yeah, noise issues. Are you seeing a lot of that still or? Um, there's a fair amount of, you know, starting mm -hmm. before seven. I would say it's, it's pretty consistent. It hasn't gotten worse, but I don't know that it's gotten better. And what about addressing nuisance noise? Because I, I remember, oh, this was probably over a year ago, reading in the paper somewhere that, um, that loud radio, uh, radio was being played loudly on a construction site and the neighbor would call the city and that the answer was to send out the health department people to measure the sound levels. But that's a public health standard. That's not a nuisance standard. We have state nuisance law as well. So I'm wondering how do you handle nuisance calls? We haven't had other calls. I don't get many of that, those. I think that was last summer and, um, and it just depends on the situation. If it's something I can contact the builder and ask them to work with their sub to turn down the volume, that's the first step. So that's where I would start in a situation like that. Because I'd really like to see prompt and kind of meaningful response to things like that because often it's those little things mm -hmm. that bother the neighbors more than, you know, the, the dirt on their driveway or something, so. Commissioner Lee. Um, I, I think that this, uh, I'm very interested to hear your program, uh, your explanation of the program because uh, obviously this is, relatively new and I know that other communities are taking a closer look at that. I think overall it's had an effect. Uh, would you agree with um, general contractors overall? I know that, uh, for example, in my neighborhood uh, we, we just got notification from a contractor that was just remodeling a kitchen for my neighbor and you know, I wasn't even aware of it. And then we got a second follow-up notice that said, we're done and we hope that we haven't been a bother. So I think that this is rubbing off on uh, sending a good um, message to other contractors. So in line with that, I was curious whether, uh, to keep it positive, is there any recognition or um, uh, possibly a list being compiled by the city uh, as far as contractors that actually do a really bang up job, good job of sort of following all this and incurring very few complaints. Um, I think if I were renovating my home or going to be going through that process, I'd probably start there because I certainly wouldn't want to select one that ended up finding out later that is notorious for starting before seven or trampling on people's property. So that would be just one suggestion is that uh, at least to keep it positive, mm -hmm. somehow recognizing those contractors that really are doing a great job like the one that was in my neighborhood. Yeah, that's definitely something we can look into. I think we have to be careful about not giving referrals as a city. Exactly. Yep. So simply that, a recognition. Right. Mm -hmm. I would. I would also. I was going to bring that up too, but kind of the reverse of that too. Are, are you know who are doing the uh, starting with four seven every day or whatever. But with that, are you? How are you tracking each individual lot, for example? So I mean, I know there's a lot of enforcement to those. You know, you could have the building official out there, the planner, you, um, city. Is there, a, is there a, any kind of central city database, for example, that tracks that lot from beginning to end to talk about the calls that came in, you know, what the history on it, concerns, you know, it, how, how is that being tracked within the city right now? Because I know previously, or I believe previously, it, was, it wasn't always connected together between your departments. Has that changed at all, or are you are working something like that right now? We do have a software called CityWorks. Um, not every department is, is tapped into that yet, but it, slowly we have been getting additional departments involved in that. And that's been a great tool to allow all of us to see what's going on on a site. On if site. there is an issue, we open up a ticket on that site and then we can put our notes in there that way. So each person touching it can put their notes in and I don't know, I'm just making this up, but if you get 10 demerits, something else may happen. I don't know, you know, is, is there a way to really enforce? And I, I completely agree on the good side too, but also from, you know, what some knuckleheads are out doing that, you know, it may be ruinant for everyone else too, you know, in the same, same way. So I don't know, is there a, do you get on the bad list? Not to, <laughs> or in particular on that property, do you, you, 
you start to be noticed as a contractor and every site you have, you're doing X wrong or something. And do you give them back any feedback across, you know, what you're seeing on their sites too? If we have repeat issues on a site, if it's going to escalate things, they're probably not going to get three days to remedy things. Um, we might just take care of them ourselves or simply place a stop work order on the site. So it definitely if sites have a lot of issues, we're, we're treating that a little bit differently. How many stop work orders have you put in in the last year? Um, I didn't calculate that before I came. I personally have done a few this year, and I know engineering has done a, a handful as well. Okay. I mean, numbers like 10 or 5 or Probably 30? Probably total if... under 10. Okay between all the departments. Okay. Commissioner Forrest? I like that idea of having a database like you were mentioning because then it could simplify things and simplify work if, say, if you're getting a lot of complaints about mud on their drive, the neighbor's driveway or something like that, then it's something that if an inspector is tapping into that or things to say, oh, I'm gonna just kinda look and see what the status is and they can alert you and save you maybe a trip or two during the process too. So um, it just seems like I like the idea of more people that know about things. Do you have like a date or, any, or a plan or to get everyone on that system or a date or roughly? I forget the name of it. City, City Works. City Works? I mean, is that um, something that's, that's going on right now? I'm not aware of the timeline. Do you guys know of anything? Okay. Any other questions? Jordan, comments. Commissioner Olson, to answer your question about the number of hits, the entire section, the three pages for residential redevelopment, have received a, just under 1,100 hits for the last 12 months. Um, and f as for where to access those, there are links for it. If you go under About Edina Information for Residents, there's a link for residential redevelopment there. And there's also a link under the mega for residents tab at the at the very top of every page. Yeah, I'm just wondering if it you know just go out on next door. You see the mm -hmm. city; those come out every once in a while, for example, or through the cities. You know, every 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 way we can to get people to know about this. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll continue to work with city yeah. to to, okay. to expand this more. Any other questions? Seeing none. Well, thanks for your time. Appreciate you coming in. And, uh, Thank you. Good luck with everything out there. Thank I'm sure you. every day is a new day, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> thanks, Cindy. So next up are the public hearings. There's one tonight, a variance for Chris and Kimberly Lawrence. And uh, Ms. Aker, will you be presenting? Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the Planning Commission. The request is for a 4.1 foot side yard setback variance for 4545 Meadow Road. The property is located uh, at the very end of Meadow Road cul-de-sac. It's highlighted here, um, a little closer view of it. The home is a one story home that has the front door you walk up from the driveway and you'll see that the garage is at about the same level as the basement. This is a recent survey of the property. What you'll notice from the survey is that the setback along the north side of the house ranges between a little over 4.8 to 4.9 feet. And on the south side, it's uh, less than 10 feet. So on both sides of the home, it's non-conforming to the minimum 10 foot side yard setbacks. Uh, that's not uncommon in the neighborhood because you can see that the home to the north is a little over six feet at the front corner to their uh, side lot line, the common lot line between the two. And then it's difficult to see, but the neighbor that is directly to the south is very close to the side lot line. The property owners would like to simply put an addition of a bedroom area above the garage which would be slightly 
narrower than the existing garage is currently, so it'll be further away on, this, on that floor than um, the existing garage setback is. It'll be one foot further inset from the sidewall of the garage. So this is the new front elevation that's being proposed. And really the only difference is, is that you have um, that living space now above the garage, which is at the main level of the house. They're not going to be adding a second floor above the existing home. This is a view of that addition above the garage uh, with the home that's directly adjacent to it that shares the common lot line. And then also uh, a view of that home that's directly opposite on the opposite side. And then also um, as it looks on either side. So the setback variance that's being requested is a 4.1 foot side yard setback variance in order to inset the living space one foot from where the existing garage setback is. The primary issue is the proposed development reasonable for the site. Um, will it relieve practical difficulties and prevent a reasonable use in complying with the ordinance? The practical difficulty in this home was built prior to current setback requirements on both sides. It is non-conforming. The light is pie-shaped, um, as are both the, the lots on either side. So the further you go back into the rear yard, the further away um, the neighbor to the north pulls away and actually is about 20 feet away from the lot line at their back corner. So uh, it's just at the very, the, the very front corners that, that both uh, properties are as close as they are. The addition will not change any of the setbacks that are existing there right now. It'll actually slightly improve upon the existing nonconforming um, setback of the garage by providing an additional foot in from the side lot line. The garage is at a basement level of the house with the main floor at the level above the garage. The addition does make sense given the existing floor plan that they have in place. They would like to preserve their rear yard and simply use the building footprint area that they currently have. They're not adding to the lot coverage. They're not changing uh, the grade or um, any other features of the site. Will the variance alter the essential character of the neighborhood? Uh, no, it will not. Um, the applicants are simply hoping to maximize the existing footprint of the home by building over the garage instead of adding more building coverage or adding a full second floor, which is not an uncommon um, request these days. Staff does recommend approval based on the plans presented and would subject sub, um, subject the staff approval to um, approval to the plans presented. And with that, I will stop and any, answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Chris. Any questions for Ms. Aker? Yes. Um, I was just wondering if there uh, has been any consult with any engineers or anything of that nature to just kind of determine the practicality of whether or not the garage can actually support this or what measures are going to be enacted so as to ensure that this garage can support this extra weight? That's actually a function of the building permit application. They will have to provide engineering okay. um, for that, and so that's part of what the building department reviews, the inspection department. Sure, reviews. thank you. Mm -hmm. I do have one question, and uh, this is this variance required? I know we changed the ordinance that you had to have a garage 10 feet from the property line, or more, it was five feet before. Is this because of that, or is it because the living space is that close to the property line? It's because the, the living, living space, space is okay. closer, so but it, it also made this garage non-conforming. Right. That's what I would, that's why I was asking about because yeah, there are a lot of non-conforming <laughs> ones of out there we made also. Mm -hmm. So I was just curious about that point. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. So if the applicant wants to uh, come forth and tell us about your addition, give us any information, feel free. Welcome. If you use the center one, um, use the microphone if you're going to use the center. Otherwise, you can step to the side podium okay. also. Unless you want to show us anything on the screen, then we can do that too. Okay. I probably don't need a mic because my mother tells me <laughs> I have a very loud voice. <laughs> but, so we're here today. First of all, thank you for considering our variance this, uh, this evening. We, um, 
We bought this house, you know, three years ago when we were a single couple and we were elated to be in Edina and we fell in love with the neighborhood, the neighbors, and the property that we have. We found that it added the beauty of our backyard has a very lush piece of woods and property and we thought, wow, this is so rare in Edina, we have to have this house. At the time we were single, we had um, lost five babies uh, prior to that. So we were kind of considering ourselves lucky that we were together and we found each other. So we bought the house as is with hopes and consideration that we'll one day be able to fill the bedroom upstairs with a child. And seeing as though we were blessed, we um, had our first baby in 2013. And at that point, we were pretty much told that was you know, going to be the end of that. And surprise, 2014 <laughs> comes around, and we have 13-month uh, apart babies Can't now. believe the doctors. So, <laughs> yes. so that, is, that is the blessing we were gifted with. And this variance really just allows us to be upstairs with our children that are two under two. And um, we want to be able to share that first level with them, and that's why we're requesting the addition over the garage, the space that's already there that we can utilize and not do anything to the integrity of the home that was existent and built from a beautiful builder that built that back neighborhood in White Oaks. So that's the reason why we're here today. Tough to follow that <laughs> um, Yeah, good luck. <laughs> We, we socialize this with our whole neighborhood up and down the circle. Uh, we had two references already sent in via email. I have two more that are with me. Everybody backs our initiative. Um, we're well set into the community that we're a part of, White Oaks, and um, we really would like to get this done to get some space in our house, comfort. Okay, any questions for the applicants? Commissioner Lee? I'm just curious, so the additional space will be a, what is it? Intended? Yep, so we originally were going to do a children's suite back there, and then our builder was like, you've got two beautiful rooms that we could use in the back where we're actually hosting one of the rooms with a very tight, just with a, a restroom and a single shower. So he had suggested we build the master suite over the garage and let the children be across from each other to share that bathroom, and then the bathroom to the left. I'm sorry, maybe this didn't get, are you tearing the garage off to no. rebuild the whole thing? No, no. no. okay. No. Really building just on just, top. just building on top just of it. Building, yeah, However, just you creating out a to hallway, building right over the existing okay. foundation, which we did have two um, builders come to your question earlier about the engineering to advise that we would have the support to be able to build over the top of that infrastructure. Okay. We would never have pursued it if there wasn't if we had it. I was just know, curious if the whole thing was coming down or you were no. saving some of the structure. Saving to, all we're the, gonna as much the infrastructure right. as we can. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Well, thanks. Thanks. I, I have the up. two other letters. Just give that to anybody, or yeah, if you want to give it to Jackie. Jackie yeah, yeah. yeah um, so there were, to, to his reference, there were two letters that we received in support. Um, one from Michael and Jacqueline Cavanaugh, and one from Mark Veldman. I'm not sure who's in the other letters, but they were both in support. So, right now, this is a public hearing. So I'd open up for any public comments, although I don't see a whole lot of people here. You feel free to come forth and uh, give us any comments, questions. Seeing none, I take a motion to close. Motion to close, public hearing. I have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. So I'll take it up back up to the, to the commission now. Any comments, discussion on this? Any motions? Tell me your thoughts. Commissioner Carr. I move approval of the variance uh, subject to the findings in the staff report. There's, second. So I have a motion, a second. Is there, is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thanks for coming in. Good luck with everything. Hope everyone fits. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> so next up on the agenda is correspondence petitions. I believe the attendance report and the council report is in here for anyone to take a look at that. Um, if any discrepancies on the attendance sheet, certainly tell Jackie. Um, don't want you to lose a point anywhere, unless needed. Uh, next up is, uh, 
I guess we could just maybe just go to the work plan right now, Carrie. Does that make sense? Or go into chair and commission comments. So what? What? Um, and it was I think Commissioner Card brought it up last time. Uh, just a review of the 2015 work plan since we're essentially halfway through the year. Um, also, you know, does it make sense what's on there? Do we have to adjust it all? One thing that is coming up, I've been invited, I think it's September, uh, the 2016 work plans are due. Was it or was it October? It's not far away, whatever it yeah. is. I don't know the exact date of that, but it is coming up sooner than yeah, we so think. Yeah, so I guess as part of this discussion, uh, you know, think about how that ties into next year as well. If there's things on here that uh, we're not going to get to or we need to get to and, and how we prioritize this too. I, you know, I, for example, the Southdale piece had kind of been a little unplanned and has taken a lot of precedent, probably a lot of the uh, resources right now. So obviously that'll probably need to be updated on here also. Yep. So, so Carrie, if you want to, sorry, if you want to just run through it for everyone's sure. sake. So I've um, handing out the plan here, and the the text in red is just just a status report of where we're at with each of those. Um, we can talk about those, or um, also note on page two, the council, you know, we change the work plan to take off the 70th and Cahill small area study and then focus on that Southdale area, which is ongoing. And the Valley View Wooddale plan is completed. I'm about the 60 day period review period from other communities just expired here um, about a week ago. So I'm ready to submit now to the Metropolitan Council. So I would end that we'd received no negative or we didn't receive any comment from uh, adjacent <laughs> cities. I hope so that we're is good in the there. middle of our city, so. <laughs> right? Um, but you never know. That's right. We've fulfilled our obligation there, so we'll be submitting that probably next week. Um, and then once the Met Council approves that, then we bring it back to the City Council and they formally adopt it as part of the comprehensive plan. Uh, let's see. Going back to the first page, um, the grading and drainage work. Um, we have a meeting, um, internal staff meeting this week. We are going our, with our engineering department and the thought there is that they will draft up some regulations to be brought to the planning commission, oh, probably in the next few weeks, maybe a month or so. That's where we wanna take a look at the potential for the security fencing around construction sites, then hone in on more detail on the, the uh, grading that's required. I, let's see, we've completed the tree ordinance the um, oh sustainability enforcement PUD kind of those that PUD criteria. My goal there is to sometime in the third quarter draft up some kind of a starting point for us to talk about um, specific guidelines for sustainability, affordable housing, some all the things that we talk about as part of a PUD. Then we can begin that that discussion. Question. Just uh, curious. Shouldn't number three under policy recommendations be completed? The Living Streets policy has been adopted and the guidelines, I believe, were approved by the City Council. That is true. That has yeah, been completed. Under, the, under C also, the liaison, yeah. commission liaison, that's done too. Connectivity Living Streets as oh, well. Oh, yes. Yeah. C1 and B3. B3. Yes. So the long and short of it is we're, we're doing well on our work plan for 2015. I'm surprised. I didn't realize we were doing that well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say surprised, I, I, but I'm happy we're doing that well. How's that sound? And not to mention the ordinance changes that we've made that aren't even on here. Yeah. Um, those are some pretty I, I, significant changes. I think you should put those on here because Get we need extra a record of that, right? Yeah, extra right. credit. <laughs> she must be. So one of the things that under policy and recommendations in particular, and, and I was talking to Carrie about this, so if, if everyone wants to review this and either at our next meeting or is that worked with it, that's two weeks away or even the next one we could have, you know, more advanced discussion on this just on what people are wanting to see or not want to see. And if, you know, if everyone want to put their names to things or things they want to champion, we could also go through that at that meeting. 
Uh, one thing in particular I want to note, though, is the midterm comp plan consideration. Uh, actually, we had in 2016, we have to start that. So that'll be a big portion of the 2016 work plan. So keep that in mind and how you wish to serve with that also as we go forth. I will say that the people on the Southdale probably will have already done their version of it because that the goal is that a lot of that hopefully does apply to that uh, next comp plan update as well. But uh, just in particular that one, that is something we are required to do. So uh, some of the other things may have to be pushed aside just to, to be working on those pieces. Yeah, we'll need to have that submitted to the Met Council by uh, 2018. So if we stay on the same path that we took back in 10 years ago, we started the fall of 2006. So that would probably be our our goal would be to start the start fall next, of 2016. Next fall. You know, having said that, I, I would, you know, just because we are doing so many things, particularly around Southdale, I would almost like to start that process a little bit earlier. So as things become with that, that we can make sure we're, I don't want to say doing the right language, but we're getting in the right pieces that we can kind of drop into it more versus having to redo it. Does that make any sense? You know, what, at least, at least so folks understand what our process is going to be for that. And I'm assuming you had ones for before. So if, I don't know if you have that around, you could send out. I'm not familiar with it that much, but it'd be good to, for everyone to know kind of what, what that, you know, when consultants were brought in, all those pieces so we could understand, you know, what the touch points are and also the input points also. Commissioner Forrest. Um, we, did we, I don't recall seeing the lighting ordinance. Can have, we didn't touch that at all, right? We did part of it. We did a really gone. obvious thing to change it, but we didn't get into a lot of details. I'm going to have to look at that because I, yeah, maybe from, I wasn't uh, here at that time. But I think we allowed like 10 foot candles. No, what? Well, I wasn't There's here There's something that really <laughs> out of whack with what? most people are doing but but it's been brought just up to what the current standards or recommended standards yeah. are good and then the um, under the um, monitoring residential redevelopment standards and ordinance I would really like to see things being quantified so that we know we know what the current issues are we know the effectiveness of different um, um, reactions to situations so I, I that I would really like to see I mean the More last time metrics. Cindy was here yeah I, I asked for that too, and, and so I was disappointed that we didn't have any numbers this time. Part of that just got to be a function of how busy she is. She was spending so much time just writing the numbers down that she wasn't spending enough time out in the field. Um, but I mean, you should have you should take notes on every phone call you get. Oh, we do, she so, does. So I mean, th those numbers you should pull the numbers from that is you know maybe once or twice a year, and, and so that you got them and and then share them with us and with the council. Yep. That'd be great. Any other comments? Like I said, and put this up on the agenda in a couple of weeks. We can go through it in more detail. People people's thoughts also. Commissioner Carr. I just wanted to say on the lighting ordinance, again, yeah, we just changed the illumination level, but I think we were, I had always discussed perhaps a more comprehensive lighting ordinance in line with what many cities are doing now, where they darken the lights in the evening, uh, at evening hours, and they found that it doesn't affect safety at all, uh, it's more energy efficient, uh, and for a variety of different reasons, it's a good idea. So I'd like that to see that for... The 2016 plan, obviously, we'll have some discussion on that, but I just wanted to comment on that one. And I think under number five, uh, B5, the sustainability enforcement, uh, I, uh, in, your, in your staff recommendations, at least one thing I'd like to see, and maybe you're thinking about it sustainable-wise, and it, it's kind of a, it's kind of also under landscaping and trees, but we have so many parking lots that are a complete parking lot and there's nothing to break them up. And, and I don't want to go swing really far one way where it becomes all trees or anything, but there's so many areas or so many cities that have at least a variation of, I'm just making this up, but five stalls you have to do a tree or you know something to that effect. So we're not completely paving over all these areas like we already have right now. So any new developments would uh, 
you know, and I think at the same time, we've also become fairly liberal on our parking requirements and not necessarily saying it has to be five per thousand or things like that. So I think that, you know, with those proof of parking and those items, can we, can we craft something so it's, you know, we don't just have the, the, the giant parking lots. And I think we've kind of done that, but it'd be nice to have something in there that when they, when they show up that it's designed that way versus having to ask or force at that point. Commissioner Forrest. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like both those suggestions. Um, the parking thing it would be nice to get something procedurally or, stru or structurally in the language of the of our ordinances regarding what proof of parking is and um, who can report that it's you know they aren't meeting their needs or whatever and, and what the criteria are for actually demanding that they provide more parking and things like that um, and. Maybe, you know, in light of what our Chair Platiger said, we should maybe look at what our uh, planting requirements are, our landscaping requirements as far as, because we always, we get numbers like, well, they're required to have this many trees, but um, maybe they aren't as up to date as we'd like them. Maybe there's times when we'd want to say, you need to screen with evergreens if it's this situation or something like that, so. Or more mid something to break up the and that's another another piece. point too yeah. to break things up I don't want to be real prescriptive necessarily but at least have some overall here's I'm not sure how you do it but here's their guidelines or something for that Commissioner Hobbs yes <laughs> yeah I mean, a, a lot of that too when you're talking about stormwater management for these parking okay. lots to get it there'll be a real incentive to have those green spots somewhere in the middle because that's how they're going to capture and treat the stormwater. So if it's incorporated in the stormwater management, you can accomplish a lot of those things at the same time too. Well, that's a good point. Maybe part of this starts to get in. It's, that's why it overlaps so many things mm -hmm. is part of it in the grading and drainage, for example. Right. Right, versus the parking. So. Right. Commissioner Carr. Just uh, Planner Teague, I don't know if we typically would obtain feedback from the city council uh, on what they might have in mind. Uh, if we're thinking in, towards the future, if they have any particular areas that they would like us to look at, uh, I think it would be good to get their feedback. And I know that they've also made some uh, visits to other cities, and something may have come to their attention that we're not aware of. So if you could, I don't know if you can get their feedback informally on we can, I can do that. Issues. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, it seems when we take the work plan before them, it's pretty well baked usually at that point and it may not be and it may not capture exactly what they're they're thinking more also but at the same time they charge us with bringing things forth too right so I think we have a pretty hefty obligation to I can try, and, say, try and get the flavor of where things are going to yeah I think one thing that's pretty important to them just in our just recent discussions um, with projects is this um, b5 standard I think that's important to them to get some quantifications around there. So I think that's I kind of our top we've priority. We've talked about that since I've been on here. I know yeah. it's, just, it's an easy one to push down the road, right? Unfortunately. Commissioner Lee. Um, so we are throwing out ideas then potentially for 2016. One of the things I has, have been uh, thinking about recently is is maybe to investigate or study sort of our, our building height requirements for residential. Um, I noticed on the uh, map that was presented tonight that right now we're primarily getting um, teardowns in, in one particular area of Edina. I, I see that's probably going to happen in other areas. Um, down in the, I'd say the southeast, southeast quadrant, uh, tends to be more ramblers. And I was realizing that the height, uh, maximum height, works well for, say, homes like in the country club area, older homes that are typically two-story, maybe colonials, um, traditional homes with steeply pitched roofs. When you get ramblers, uh, I'm just wondering if that, that number is, 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 works as well. So one of the things would be to look at how we define building height, and maybe it is something that we might want to consider as, as Roger in our work session had stated that we look at 
um, particularly some type of uh, maybe an overlay zoning. Uh, if that is going to happen, I can see that that's going to become a landscape of, of uh, low-laying homes punctuated by taller two-story homes. And, and maybe that ultimately is the direction, but I guess it would be nice to kind of have that discussion. Is, is, that, is that indeed the right thing to do? Um, would there be any advantage to keeping uh, a height, putting a different height restriction in certain areas? What does that gain? Um, I think homes are tending now towards smaller, especially when you're not talking about top tier, custom, um, expensive homes. Most homes now are actually kind of going back to that footprint of, uh, of the, the one level and, and a potential walkout if you can get it. It's lower cooling costs, uh, low, lower building material costs. There's um, higher efficiency for uh, fueling and, and um, heating. So all those things, I think, uh, might, be, might be worth considering something, some type of study to take a look at our building height and whether that needs to be revised. Commissioner Clark. I think that's a great suggestion. And I know we had talked about working with the, or having the Heritage Preservation Board come and speak to us. And they are, have some kind of overlay uh, concept that they would like to propose, or at least are working on. I know when I was on the Heritage Preservation Board, we um, commissioned a study to be done, a survey of mid-century modern homes. These are all the ramblers that were built after the war because they're being torn down and they are now considered historic. Now, each individual home may not be historic, but a, um, a neighborhood of ramblers could be considered historic. So that kind of goes to your point of the uh, height of a building. So I think I would say I, I, I like that idea and maybe we can have the Heritage Preservation Board and I believe they are scheduled to come to us but talk about the mid-century modern homes, the kind of surveys they've done um, and get some feedback from them as well. Anyone else? Like I said we can discuss it in more detail next time after folks have had a chance to Noodle on a little bit more, too. All right, thanks. Uh, Chair and Commission comments. Anything on the Southdale people? Um, well, they, it was presented in front of the council at the last council meeting, and um, there was some, you know, serious discussion on it, but they did uh, approve the principles, and they wanted to see in more detail what phase two, what stage two would actually entail. But I don't know, I, I, do you know, Carrie? Uh, I haven't heard anything like when we're meeting again or what the next steps are on that, but. Um. Yeah, nothing scheduled as of, as of now. I think that the thought is that we should schedule something sooner than later to have a debrief and where we go next. Because yeah. they had a, had a fair amount of comments too, yeah. didn't they, or I think you guys talked about kind of a pseudo formal response to that their comments or not right I think is what I saw yeah I think that's yeah. that's the kind of the idea I mean to try to get back relatively soon to follow up on the heels of some very good discussion that happened at the City Council uh -huh. yeah I, I agree I think it, you know we should try to keep that going and get back in front of them while it's still kind of fresh and kind keep, of keep the going. momentum going mm -hmm. yeah but they did also, you know, support Carrie to say that to start implementing the uh, principles and, you know, if that's what the term we want to use, principles. I know we even discussed that, but, yeah. As applications come forth, is that what? Yeah, I'm right. going to attach it right to our rezoning and comprehensive plan. Applications, we'll get it posted on the website okay. um, so people know in advance. Any other comments? Any staff comments, Carrie? Uh, none for me tonight, no. Nope. So what else is upcoming or, or July meetings? Do you have much on the agenda for uh, this? We will have uh, the Heritage Board Chair will be here at your next meeting uh, for a overlay rezoning. Um, but nothing too terribly big on the horizon. Okay. So I probably shouldn't ask this, but I will. So on 7200 France, what... 
what what's going or what's the next deadline on that or where oh, is sure. the next Oh sure, I should give you an update on that. That's yeah, that'd be a good great. suggestion. Thank you. They have officially withdrawn their request. Oh, they have. So okay. the original request is done. The thought is they are going to regroup and redesign a, a redevelopment proposal on that site. I don't know exactly what that is, but I have given them a set of the working principles and said you need to address each one of these questions. So they're going to make that part of their um, application submittal. So stay tuned. Do you know if they, do they own that site or just have it under they control? They do own the site. They do own the site. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions, comments, anybody? With that, then, I would think I would take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank you. Motion carries. Yeah, we all do.